welcome again to this particular session. So in this particular one, we'll pick up 8.3 to begin this particular session. In the last one, we did till up to 8.2, if you remember. Correct? So W3 Incorporation, an Indian company, has a branch at Country X, and the trial balance of the branch as the 31st of 3, 2023 is given to you. And as you can see, the very first item is 51,000. Now, before I proceed further, let me tell you in this case, actually later on, you will find there is an information related with fixed asset that is depreciate fixed asset at 10% per annum at written down value. So, actually, I will have to adjust this adjustment in the trial balance. And how I am going to adjust later on when I am going to convert the branch trial balance. Before converting the branch trial balance into the Indian currency, what I will do, I know that fixed asset here, branch has written $51,000. So I will try to adjust this information, this adjustment in the trial balance itself. So 10% depreciation means 5,100. 5,100. Is it clear to you or not? Then in the outer column, I will write 45,900 and then I will convert this item into what we call reporting currency and also I will write in the trial balance now 5,100. If you will see closely, I have written 51,000 only, but I have now broken 51,000 into net value of fixed asset and depreciation. This is how I will have to adjust the adjustments. Similarly, after fixed asset, we have been given opening stock, then we have been given purchases, then we have been given sales. And the next item is goods sent to branch account. Now, goods sent to branch account is given to me as $34,000. And given below is an information, head office sent goods to branch for rupees 15 lakh. It means the value of $34,000 is equal to 15 lakh. If you remember, I told you there are two items which you need to actually take care of. One is good sent to uh, good sent from head office because at the time you need not require any rate to convert them into reporting currency. Rather, its corresponding value will be given in the question itself. So here the value is already given in the question. And after this, we have been given carriage inward and other branch expenses to the extent of 5,000. Again, in this question, there is information related with it. Expenses outstanding. So I will have to incorporate the expenses outstanding in the trial balance itself. Normally, any information related to expenses outstanding, what you do? You simply add the expenses outstanding first to the relevant expense account and then you also reflect it towards the liability side. Similarly, when I am going to prepare the trial balance later on, I will write expenses, all these expenses, carriage inward other branch, 5,000. First, I will add 1,000 to it because there are expenses outstanding 1,000. That means total expenses are worth rupees 6,000. And then also, I will write expenses outstanding separately in the trial balance that is 1000 that means the adjustments <coughs> are being incorporated into the trial balance itself that is a better methodology because sometime in the examination question forces us to adjust all the adjustment in the trial balance itself correct so that is the reason actually i would like you to actually adopt this particular methodology then we have been given daters and we have been given creditors and cash at bank and Again, there is another important item. Both these items, goods sent from branch and also head office account are very important. Head office account is having a credit balance. Head office account is having a credit balance means branch is claiming that it is supposed to pay $46,000. It is supposed to pay $46,000 to the head office. Correct? Uh, however, Below it is given that head office is claiming from branch only 20 lakhs. Head office books have shown an amount of 20 lakhs due from branch. That means the corresponding value of $46,000 is equal to 20 lakhs. Then we have been given closing stock. And another important information is with respect to fixed asset. That fixed asset were purchased. <coughs> 
purchased uh, and on that date exchange rate was one dollar is equal to 60 obviously you will have to use this rate especially the question is silent whether it is integral foreign branch or non-integral foreign branch so quite obviously you will have to presume that it happens to be a case of uh, integral foreign branch wherein fixed asset will be converted as per the rate which was prevailing on the date of the transaction and you are now given what we call exchange rates opening is 63 closing is 67 and average rate as you can see is 65 correct even though the solution is at your disposal solution is at your disposal but still i would love you to pay attention because i'm going to solve this question and in order to solve the question i will require a bit of space so because i will require a bit of space i have just reducing the view of a bit to create more space for me now this is the problem i am time and again facing here just wait for a while then sometimes stops virtually working this is the only problem this electronic pen is creating bit of problem Let's hope, just wait some time, you know, all these things. Okay, now I will reduce the view. So I have reduced the view now, correct, just to create more space for me. So I have created the space. The question is already before you look into the question again, and uh, I will try to give you as much a solution as possible now. So, first of all, what you are supposed to do this is 8.3 complete solution i am doing here 8.3 under the first step what i am supposed to do first of all let me write here translation translation of branch office trial balance branch office trial balance Translation of branch office trial balance in reporting currency, in reporting currency. And in order to convert the same, what you will do, first of all, you will write here in one column all the details, then you will write here debit, you will write credit because lots of space is required. Both these columns are in dollars, that is, this information we are already having in the question itself then i will write here exchange rate uh, this is in dollars correct and this is your exchange rate i will write here rupee one dollar is equal to rupee and then i will write debit column again and credit column again and again here i am going to write what I am going to write rupee value because last two columns will reflect the corresponding reporting currency value. Is it clear to you or not? So, the first item is fixed asset. Now we begin what we call converting the trial balance and in order to convert, as I told you, when I am going to convert fixed asset, what I am supposed to do, as I told you, I will write 51,000. This is the value given. But I am incorporating the adjustment in the trial balance itself. The adjustment is 10% depreciation. I compute that is equal to 5,100. I am going to subtract it from 51,000. And then in the outer column, as I told you, I will write 45,900. And fixed asset will be converted. As per the rate which was prevailing on the date of the transaction, it was given to us as 60. Then I am going to write its value also 27,54,000, its corresponding value in reporting currency. Then you must not forget to write depreciation because you are incorporating the adjustment in the trial balance. Correct? And you have just computed depreciation as 5,100. It will be written towards the debit side itself. You are going to apply the same rate which you applied for the fixed asset. 
then you will also convert it by multiplying 60 with 5100 to get 3,6,000. This is how you are going to prepare the converted trial balance. First three columns information is already given to you in the question itself. Then the next item is opening stock. I will write opening stock which is given to us as $22,000. Not $22,000. It is opening stock. I will use the opening rate. Opening rate is equal to 63. In the outer column, I will write 13,86,000. 13,86,000. Is it clear to you or not? Then after that, it is given to us purchases. As far as amount of purchases is concerned, it is given to you as 95,000. So you will write here purchases 95,000. Purchases 95,000 towards the debit side. And because purchases is a revenue nature item, you will use the average rate, which happens to be 65. Then you will multiply it with 95,000 to get 61,75,000. 61,75,000. Is it clear to you or not? Next item happens to be sales. Sales is written towards the credit uh, side. So you will first of all write towards the credit side $1,66,000. Again, you are going to use what we call average rate. And this time <coughs> value will be written in the on the credit side, 107,90,000. The next item is your all the expenses that is carriage inward. I will simply write carriage, etc. Correct. Now, again, carriage given to us is 5,000, that is expenses 5,000. And below it is written that expenses outstanding is 1000. So I told you I will have to incorporate this information in the trial balance itself. So instead of writing 5000, I am going to write 6000 expenses. I will use the average rate that is 65. Is it clear to you or not? The 6000 into 65 will be equal to 3,90,000. 3,90,000. 3,90,000. Then expenses outstanding, I should not forget to write. Expenses outstanding given to us 1000. Now expenses outstanding, sorry, I should write it towards the what we call debit side. So I will write it towards the debit side expenses outstanding 1000. Expenses outstanding is 1000. It is a liability. Lab, all the balance sheet items generally will be converted on the basis of closing rate and the closing rate i think is 67 so i will write it towards the liability side 67000 after expenses outstanding we have been given daters i will write here daters amount of daters is equal to 9000 i will write here 9000 correct again 67 i will use the rate and towards the debit side i will write 63000 Six lakh three thousand. Then, besides debtors, we have got creditors in this case. Amount of creditors is seven thousand. I will write here seven thousand. Sixty-seven will be the exchange rate which I would use, and the figure I will write towards the credit side four lakh sixty-nine thousand. Four lakh sixty-nine thousand. You are having the solution, but still, I would like you to actually pay attention towards here then cash and bank is the next item as far as cash and bank is concerned 3000 is the amount as you can see 3000 and 67 we will use the rate we will write here 2 lakh 1000 and then head office account is given to us in the trial balance, it is written towards the credit side. It means branch is claiming that we have to pay to the head office $46,000. We will use the actual rate. We will use the actual rate. And actual rate is $46,000. And its value is given in the question itself, as I have already told you. So no exchange rate here I have written. You can write on actual basis if you want. That is equal to 20. Actually, there is another item which I haven't written. After sales, if you look into the question, there is goods sent to branch account. So, goods sent to branch account, these two items, intentionally I am writing it over here itself, 34,000. 
its corresponding value is also given to us. It is given in the question that in the current year head office has sent goods worth rupees uh, 15 lakh to the branch. So its corresponding value will be considered as 15 lakh. These two items are very vital to solve the question. Now, after having converted all the relevant items, the next step is that you will have to total them up. Your total will be equal to 135,15,000 as far as your debit column is concerned. Your credit column total is 133,26,000. And your this column actually is not 135, rather it is all 133. So slightly your credit column is bigger. It means slightly your credit column is bigger. First of all, you will write here exchange difference. Simply write exchange difference. Because exchange difference, balancing figure is coming this side. So it will be considered as a sort of loss. Why it will be considered? Because your liability side is less in comparison to your asset side. Your liability side is, sorry, greater in comparison to your asset side. That means your assets are less. So that is why it is a case of loss. Or otherwise, you can simply write exchange difference. Because it is a case of integral foreign branch, this exchange difference will be taken to, as I told you earlier, will be taken to profit and loss account. Now, not only till up to this point you will have to prepare in the examination. Examiner may actually ask you to prepare profit and loss account besides converted trial balance because this is just one part of the entire solution. Suppose if in this question we have to prepare trading and profit and loss account, how we would have trading and profit and loss account. First of all, right trading and profit and loss account. Trading and profit and loss account. First of all, we will prepare trading and profit and loss account. In order to prepare trading and profit and loss account, I stretch a line. Besides trading a profit and loss account, we may have to prepare balance sheet also. We may have to prepare balance sheet also. Now, it is very simple to be very honest with you. Because you have already prepared your trial balance into reporting currency. Now all these columns, first four columns have become irrelevant now. Because in order to prepare the rest of the things, you do not require any information from the first four columns. Only last two columns will be used. For example, there is fixed asset. Fixed asset will be put in the balance sheet. Opening stock, depreciation, opening stock, purchases, sales, carriage. All these items will find place in trading and profit and loss account. Then, ex then debtors, creditors, cash at bank, all these items will come in balance sheet. Head office account is credit balance. It will be written towards the credit side, that is liability side. And goods sent to branch will be written towards the debit side of trading and profit and loss account. It is as simple as that. But before we close it, we, we have already seen it is a case of exchange difference. See, it is trial balance. Any item of trial balance is posted only once. Remember one thing. This is the first and fundamental rule. Second point is that there is exchange difference. Sometimes students get confused where we should put this particular item. At least you should know a very simple rule because this balance is appearing towards debit side. It will come towards the debit side of profit and loss account. So even exchange difference will be posted to the profit and loss account. It is a case of integral foreign branch. Correct? And... After this, after this, one point you need to take care of because often we forget to translate closing stock. Closing stock is given below. Amount of closing stock, as you have noticed, given to you in the question is $20.20,000. 20, $20,000, isn't it or not? Closing stock is equal to $20,000. So, you will have to convert the closing stock and in order to convert the closing stock you will have to use the closing rate the closing rate is equal to 67 rupees 67 so its corresponding value will be how much after having prepared the trial balance you need to actually use this item correct 
Once you have prepared the trial balance, you need to use this item. So I will write here 20,000 into 67, that gives me 13,40,000. So rupee value is equal to 13,40,000. So now we have converted every item of trial balance and now we can proceed to prepare trading and profit or loss account and balance sheet and which should be almost like a stroll in the park for you. So first I'm picking up those items which will fall in trading and profit or loss account. Correct? We know that fixed asset will not find place but depreciation will find place and we also know that depreciation comes towards the p &L. So I will write depreciation here. Amount of depreciation is 3,6,000. Item of trial balance is posted only once. Remember one thing, correct? Then we have opening stock. We start with opening stock now. Opening stock is 13,86,000. So I will write here 13,86,000. Then we have got in this case purchases. Amount of purchases given to you, purchases. What is the amount of purchases? 61,70,000. 61 if you will look into your converted trial balance. Then also write goods sent to branch, although I have written it as a last item. Goods sent to branch, 15 lakh. This item will also be written over here. 15 lakh, correct? Then there are expenses in the form of carriage inward. Carriage inward. So in the carriage inward, there is three lakh ninety thousand worth of expense. You write three lakh ninety thousand. First, first time scanning the debit side. So that is why. Then there is exchange difference also. You write exchange difference as I told you because exchange difference is appearing towards the debit side. So it will come towards the debit side, but in the profit and loss account. Correct. Exchange difference is eleven thousand. Now we move over to over to the credit side. In the credit side, the item which will be written towards the credit side of trading account is sales. You write hundred and seven lakh ninety thousand. That's all because rest of the items are related to balance sheet. In this case, then closing stock you must not forget to write. We have just converted closing stock that is 13,40,000. So I will write here 13,40,000. This is my closing stock. Is it clear to you or not? So we have written closing stock. Now closing stock will also be written later on in balance sheet. Now I am in a position to find out my gross profit. My gross profit will be 26,79,000. 26,79,000. I will write this gross profit as gross profit brought down 26,79,000. Now I will compute my net profit. My net profit will be equal to 23,63,000. 23,62,000, sorry. This is your net profit. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Now you are in a position to prepare your balance sheet also. In order to prepare your balance sheet, whatever remaining items are there in the trial balance, just have a look over those and simply put them in proper places. For example, first item is fixed asset. Fixed asset is 27,54,000. Here one point I would like to actually clear. Many of the students actually get confused when we adjust the trial balance, when we adjust the what we call adjustment in the trial balance. Honestly speaking, it is not, it is not the concrete methodology. What I mean to say is that it is not necessary that you have to solve it in this manner, the way actually I adopt it. You have the complete choice, the complete prerogative, the complete discretion, whether you want to adopt this approach, which I adopted. What I mean to say, all the adjustment I incorporated in the trial balance, you could have gone other way around as you are accustomed to. For example, in the trial balance, I could have written fixed asset at 51,000 only without adjusting depreciation correct in that case i would have multiplied it with what called rate 16. i would have got amount equal to fifty one thousand into 60 that is equal to 30 lakh sixty thousand if my calculation is correct in the trial balance i would have written this much is it clear to you since i'm not that what i'm trying to tell 
it is not necessary that adjustment need to be incorporated in the in the trial balance you can adopt this methodology also so without what we call adjusting the adjustment you simply convert 51000 into into this figure correct it means if you would not have had taken the adjustment in the trial balance then fixed asset would have appeared in the trial balance at 30 lakh 60000 and in the balance sheet you would have written fixed asset 30 lakh 60000 now you will give the depreciation because earlier you did not give the depreciation now you will give the depreciation that is equal to 10 percent if you will subtract 10 percent depreciation that will be equal to 3 lakh 6 thousand and if you if you are going to subtract this figure you would have written here 27 lakh 54 thousand and this depreciation would have been written towards the debit side of pnl also you could you can easily follow this approach also because you are more accustomed to this particular approach it is your alternative it is not necessary that adjustment need to be incorporated in the trial balance you can see even in this case the methodology which we followed fixed asset are appearing at 27 lakh 54 and depreciation at 3 lakh 6 and even without what we call adjusting the adjustments in the trial balance we are getting the same results even in that case depreciation in the balance sheet would have been 27 lakh 54 thousand but why i'm trying to tell you this methodology because often you will confront the you will confront problems wherein examiner would force you to adjust and incorporate all the adjustment in the trial balance itself so in that particular case you would face problem if you are not accustomed to all these things so that is the point actually which i just wanted to hammer into your mind and that is the reason why i told you this particular methodology is it clear to you or not so fixed asset are given and then in the balance sheet we will write daters first i am scanning the debit side daters is equal to six lakh three thousand and then we have cash and bank cash and bank as you can see is given to you as two lakh one thousand so you will write two lakh one thousand correct and don't forget to write closing stock we, i have seen students so often tend to forget that is 13 lakh 40 thousand now towards the credit side we have already incorporated sales then there are outstanding expenses outstanding expenses is equal to 67000 you will write 67000 and then you have in this case creditors you will write creditors 4,67,000 and head office account which is appearing towards the credit side you will write here 20 lakhs that means this much of amount branch is supposed to pay to the head office it is a liability for branch and very important the net profit which branch has earned also belongs to actually head office so you will add this item to it you can show them separately also so that will be equal to 43,62,000. So now your balance sheet will get tally. So this is how you have to actually solve the questions in the examination. Is it clear to you? So all these things could be actually asked. So, and mostly such things are asked in the examination. So now we move over to the 8.4 and let's see actually what is given over here. As far as 8.4 is concerned, uh, just let me actually flip through this so that right i hope it is now more clear in this case an indian company moon star limited has a branch at virginia so again in this question company is in india that information you need to keep track of correct you need to keep track of such informations and then we have been given here that branches at virginia usa so and further it is also given that branch is a non-integral foreign operation non-integral foreign operation now if it happens to be a non-integral for a foreign operation only two differences will arise one regarding fixed asset fixed asset will be converted 
on the basis of closing rate and not on the basis of rate which was prevailing on the date of the transaction and second the exchange difference which i took in this case to profit a loss account which i took to profit a loss account now i will not take to profit a loss account rather exchange difference will be reflected in the balance sheet and we will write foreign currency translation reserve either towards the debit side or credit side depending upon the fact whether it is having a debit balance or credit balance correct this is another scenario which we would need to actually look at it on 31st of march 2022 the following balances appeared in the books of the branch so let's go through this quickly office equipment now let me actually increase the view so that you are in a better position so after having increased the view you find that office equipment of 48,000 furniture and fixtures is equal to 3200 stock happens to be this much purchase is 96 dollars of course sales is this much goods sent to branch is 32 obviously it's time and again i cannot uh, what we could tell you that you have to take care of this particular item because its corresponding values shall always be available in the question and then we have got expenses 5200 Head office account is having a credit balance. Branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay you 45,600 daters, 9,600 creditors, this much. And in this question, we find that we have been given cash at bank 2,400. <clears throat> now, what further information is given to you? Now, before, before we start converting, just go through the direction of this particular question. If you will go through the direction of this particular questions, suddenly you will find the point which I was trying to tell you at that time. Prepare a trial balance incorporating adjustment converting dollars into rupees. Correct? Number one. And second thing is that we have been given trading and profit and loss account and the balance sheet we are supposed to prepare. So as per the direction of the question, that is what actually the point I was trying to tell you earlier. Sometimes question forces us that we have to adjust the various further information in the trial balance itself, provided they are adjustments in real sense, correct? For example, in this case, there is salary outstanding. So now you know the rule how to actually just adjust it. When I will write salaries in this question, salaries were given let me see where salaries are given first of all expenses are given so i will use this word salary with expenses and i will add 400 to it and besides that i will also write 400 separately as liability correct while preparing the trial balance number one no point number two depreciate office equipment by 10 percent on written down value basis now we know how to actually convert it now office equipment in this case is given to you as 48,000 so from 48,000 you will subtract 4,800 net figure you will write and then also 4,800 you will write separately is it clear to you this much of information should be clear and head office sent goods to branch at 15,80,000. Head office has sent goods worth rupees 15,80,000. So that means its corresponding value. This is the corresponding value of goods sent to branch. So corresponding value of goods sent to branch is actually already available in the question that is equal to 15,80,000. You may say so. 15,80,000 its corresponding value is available as per this particular information. Then head office has shown an amount of 20 lakh 50,000 due branch, due from branch. That means head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive 20 lakh 50,000. That means this is the corresponding value of head office account. Corresponding value of this amount is equal to 20 lakh 50,000. 20 lakh 50,000. Is it clear to you? So, and closing stock is given. After having prepared your trial balance below, you must not forget to write what we call your closing stock. And don't forget that it is a case of integral foreign branch, uh, non-integral foreign branch. In case of non-integral foreign branch, this information is irrelevant for us. The rate of exchange on 1-4-2021 is so much. Sorry, this information is vital. On 1-4-2020, when fixed assets were purchased, the rate of exchange was $43. This information is not important for one. 
us because this is a case of non-integral foreign operation. I will have to use closing rate of fixed asset to convert fixed asset into reporting currency. The rate of exchange in the beginning is given. So opening rate is equal to 47 rupees 47 and closing rate is given to you as 45. This is closing rate given to you and average rate is also given to you. Sometimes a student again get confused because many students have a tendency of converting the, uh, comp computing the average rate by taking the average of opening and closing. If this folly or this tendency I will reflect here, 47 plus 45 divided by 2, I may not get 45. That is why I am trying to tell you, if average rate is given, then always use the given average rate. However, in the question, if average rate is not given, in that case, you will you have no other alternative, but you will have to compute the average rate by taking the average of opening and closing balance. So these are the information. Honestly speaking, you can easily manage this information. See here. In this question, office equipment, we will start with office equipment. I am starting with 43,200. Why I just told you? Because balance actually is 48,000. I will subtract 4,800 depreciation. So net value 43,200. I will use the closing rate and the closing rate in this particular case was given to us. Closing rate in this question is 50. Actually, I have written here 45. This closing rate actually is 50. On March 22 is 50 and opening rate is 47. So closing rate is 50. So this will be the value which we would get. Correct. Then depreciation on office equipment. Depreciation on office equipment 4,800 into 50. You will get 2,40,000. So here while converting the trial balance. And I have simply made four columns. That is details, amount in dollars, into exchange rate and debit and credit columns these are debit columns these are credit columns of reporting currency is it clear to you if this suits you you better go this way around then depreciation on then furniture 2880 into 50 because we were supposed to give depreciation on uh, office equipment and furniture and fittings also so the net value of furniture and fitting after depreciation is 2880 and 50 you will use the rate same rate you will use for the depreciation of office equipment actually in this question we are supposed to pay depreciation on office equipment also when i was explaining this point 3200 minus 320 2880 will become the value of the furniture and 320 depreciation you will write separately here it is 2880 into 50 you have written and then 320 into 50 this is the amount of depreciation Opening stock is 22,400. You are going to apply the rate 47. Purchases 96,000. You are going to apply the average rate. Then sales are 146,400. Average rate you will use. Must not forget to put it towards the credit side. Goods sent to branch. Now it's on actual basis. Now on actual basis its value is. You need not require to write it in the examination. You can. Simply write $32,000. This value is equal to 15 lakh 80,000. Expenses 5,200. I added salary outstanding here. So 5,600 into 45. This is average rate. And expenses outstanding, that is salary outstanding, is 400 into 50. That is liability. Now, debtors closing rate 50. Creditors closing rate. Cash at bank closing rate, obviously. Now, head office account, its actual value is always given as I just told you. So, you will write here 20 lakh 50,000. Now, you will simply total them up. After having total, you take the exchange difference. Here, you will have to write the exchange difference. Logically, in this case, it is a case of gain because your assets are more, no doubt about that. Now, you will start preparing your what we call trading and profit or loss account. See here. Office equipment you can straight away put in the balance sheet. Depreciation because an item of trial balance is written only once. So depreciation you will put it towards the debit side of PL. Furniture and fittings you will write towards the balance sheet. Depreciation towards the debit side of trading and profit and loss account. Then we have in this case stock, opening stock in trading account, purchases trading account, sales in trading account, goods sent to branch in trading, expenses in trading, expenses outstanding towards liability side. 
डेटर्स इन दी बैलेंस शीट क्रेडिटर्स इन दी बैलेंस शीट कैश एट बैंक इन दी बैलेंस शीट हेड ऑफिस अकाउंट इट इज क्रेडिट बैलेंस वी विल राइट टूवर्ड्स दी लायबिलिटी साइट एंड देन वी मस्ट नॉट फॉरगेट रिगार्डिंग क्लोजिंग स्टॉक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई वॉली टोल्ड यू ओपनिंग स्टॉक वी हैव रिटर्न परचेज गुड सेंट फ्रॉम हेड ऑफिस सेल्स Now closing stock dollar twenty one thousand five hundred is given. You will use the closing rate to get the what we call value ten lakh seventy five thousand. And similarly, depreciation on office equipment and furniture and fitting two fifty six expenses. Remember, it is a case of non-integral foreign operation. You are not going to put exchange difference over here. So your net profit is this much. Coming over to the balance sheet, office equipment was twenty four lakh. and we have subtracted the amount of depreciation just let me see office equipment i should write straight way 21 lakh 60000 there is no need for you to write it this way round if you if you are incorporating the information in the trial balance you should not write it this way correct i will cut it you simply write 21 lakh 60 you simply write this is, this is just to make you understand that if i would not have had what we call taken the information of depreciation in the trial balance in that case i would have written it this way round however in the trial balance we have written 144000 as the value so this value i will take here and depreciation we have already written closing stock 10 lakh 75 debtors uh, and then in this question there are prepaid expenses i have written it is not prepaid expenses what is this 15400 i think this is you cut this information there is no such information in the question correct uh, and then cash at bank is 1 lakh 20 your total will be okay don't worry about that coming over to this side outstanding salaries 20000 creditors 3 lakh 40 this is the point i was trying to tell you foreign currency translation reserve your exchange difference is 4 lakh 66800 and remember one thing it is appearing towards the credit side so logically it will be written towards liability side foreign currency translation reserve foreign currency translation reserve now head office balance and then you add the net profit and you write this amount there are no prepaid expenses in this question don't worry about that this figure is unnecessarily got printed however in your notes i don't think it will be over there and because these are the only item office equipment furniture debtors and cash at bank now and there is closing stock which we have written so this question is easily manageable i think you can easily do it we move over to the next question now 8.5 on 31st of december 2020 we find following balances appeared in the books of chennai branch of english firm try to understand here firm or the organization or the company is english firm and it is having a head office in new york now this is the first question but not obviously the last one in this question the head office is situated outside india so your reporting currency is not rupees your reporting currency will become dollar so don't let it skip out of your memory this time you will have to adopt the reverse strategy so far you were converting the what we call other currencies into rupee but now you will have to actually reverse it because this time branch has prepared because branch is in india in chennai as you can see so branch has prepares it prepared its account in rupee value however this time rupee is foreign currency and you will have to convert it into as i told you dollars or dollars because your head office is in new york in usa and uh, reporting currency is dollar branch it is given to you that opening stock is 234000 then purchases and sales are given to you debtors and creditors are given to you bills receivable and bills payable are given to you besides salary and wages are given to you rates and taxes are given then furniture then bank account and then here it is written new york account that mean branch is claiming we have to pay 599150 to the new york branch account correct besides in this question we have been given closing stock 
another important aspect of this question is branch account branch account in new york books that is head office books generally in the head office books branch account always shows the debit balance so no new information so branch is showing a debit balance and it is equal to 13400 what does it mean it means head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive in terms of dollars 13400 whereas branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay 599150 now it means its value is already available with us is it clear to you or not is it clear fine now furniture appeared in the head office books at dollar one seven five zero this sometime in the question is straight away the value of any item is given so even in that case you will have to exercise caution because here furniture is given to you at 91,000 and you may start wondering which rate you have to use because it is a case of integral foreign operation because nothing else is mentioned in the question so we will presume it to be a case of integral foreign operation number one and in case of integral foreign operation rule is that in order to convert furniture we generally go for the what we call rate uh, uh, of the date on which the transaction took place so you may otherwise waste your time because in this case furniture which is given at 91,000 its value as you can see is given over here 1750 so straight away I will write furniture and corresponding reporting currency value in terms of dollar will be 1750 now you have been given the rate of exchange on 31st of December 2019 was rupees 52 and at the end of the year it is 51 so that means the opening rate is this much closing rate is this much and average rate is given to you prepare the head office prepare in the head office books the profit and loss account and balance sheet of the branch assuming it is a case of integral foreign operation now in this type of question what you are supposed to do please pay attention just I have intentionally written the information which is given in the trial balance to make you understand better. Your first step obviously will be your first step obviously will be calculation of exchange translation loss, exchange translation loss of Chennai branch trial balance. Actually, calculation of exchange translation loss you need not require to write. You simply write branch trial balance converted in dollars as a 31st of December 2020 you simply write this much there is no need to write this sentence correct now you have seen that opening stock is given to you in terms of rupee please don't forget that so this time first two values are in terms of rupee first two values are in terms of rupee you need not require to forget this this is your branch office information correct and then you will convert it into reporting currency your reporting currency of course is dollars debit credit column first you simply extract the trial balance as it is correct i have made no changes opening stock purchases sales daters creators bills receivable bills payable salary and wages rent and taxes furniture bank new york account correct I have as it is presented the information first quite obviously it is a case of opening stock on this date conversion rate happens to be dollar 52 so I will write here rupee 50 sorry one dollar was equal to 52 I will write 52 then we have 50 then 51 purchases and sales we will use the average rate daters and creditor we will use the closing rate and bills receivable and bills payable we will use the closing rate salary and wages we will use in case of salary and wages we will use the average rate isn't it or not similarly rent and rates we will also use the average rate and in case of furniture no rate is we are going to use because the value of the furniture is given to us in this case bank account we will use the average rate or sorry we will use the closing rate because bank is an asset now in this particular question how to convert 
Suppose I want to convert rupee value into dollars. Just to make you understand, because I can simply tell you, when we convert into rupee, we generally multiply the foreign currency with the rupee. Correct? However, when we have to adopt the reverse approach, for example, this time we have to convert the rupee into the foreign currency, into the what we call uh, the reporting currency, which happens to be a currency other than rupee. So this time I will divide 2,34,000 by 52. I can simply tell you. But point you need to understand that what is the logic? It is simple. For example, it is given that $1, $1 is equal to 52 rupees correct as per opening rate one dollar is equal to 52 rupees if 52 rupees is equal to one dollar what will be the value of two lakh thirty four thousand rupee because we are having the values at our disposal in terms of rupee so if i will solve it you can see very easily two lakh thirty four thousand divided by 52 then only I will get 4,500. Is it clear to you or not? That means when you will have to convert the rupee into some other currency, in that case, actually, you will have to adopt this approach of dividing the item. Purchases 15,62,500 is written towards the debit side. You divide it by what we call, first of all, 50 to get this figure 31,250. Then similarly, 23,743,750, you divide it by 50 to get 46,875. Dated 7,65, closing rate is 51. Divide 7,65 by 51 to get 15,000. Then divide 5,10,000. Divide 5,10,000 by 51. By 51 to get what we call this figure. Is it clear to you? And then we have bills receivable and bills payable. So divided by 51 to get these figures. Then salary and wages we have been given. Average rate we will use to get this particular amount. R rent rates and taxes. 50 average amount we will use to get this particular figure. 91,000 its actual value is given on actual basis. On actual basis so you will write here 1,750 1, because this value is available with us then bank balance is given to you and you will divide it by the closing rate to get this value New York office account branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay 599,150 but its corresponding value again is given in the question this is 13,400 now you will add these figures. So you will get the balancing figure here actually. I haven't shown the total. But balancing figure is appearing towards this particular side. This balancing figure will be known as exchange difference. You can instead of writing exchange translation loss, you can simply write exchange difference. Obviously it is a loss because item is appearing towards the debit side. Now we have to prepare trading and profit and loss account. Quite obviously, you are the head office now. You have to prepare the branch trading and profit and loss account. And you have the what we call figures of the branch at your disposal now in your currency. So with the help of these two items, you can quickly and within a flick of second prepare your this account. For example, opening stock will be written in your trading and profit and loss account, purchases and sales in trading and profit and loss account, daters and creditors in balance sheet. And similarly, bills receivable and bills payable in balance sheet. All these items, salary, rent and rates will be written in profit and loss account. Then furniture in balance sheet and bank account in balance sheet. New York account towards the liability side of balance sheet, you will write $13,400. Exchange difference, you will put towards the profit and loss account towards the debit side. And don't forget to write closing stock which I have done over here itself. See, opening stock in terms of dollar, purchases. This is a gross profit sales. Now, closing stock given to you is rupee 6,37,500. You will divide it by rupee 51 to get the 
corresponding value in terms of dollar correct so this is how you are going to prepare and you will get your gross profit then salary rent rates and exchange difference and you will get the net profit and balance sheet now you can prepare furniture closing stock trade daters bills receivable cash at bank and head office account and then add the net profit and then you will have trade creditors and bills payable so this is how you will do this particular question and this there is another question which is similar to this one i think question number six is an interesting question that that is 8.6 which i will do later on and this question you can easily manage by yourself i need not require to talk about this 8.7 you can do on 31st of march 2022 the following ledger balances have been extracted from the books of washington branch now this is washington branch that being branch is outside india correct so branch has prepared its account in terms of dollar so unless and until otherwise stated actually question has stated that convert them into indian rupee so in this question you have to simply show the conversion converted value you are required to convert above ledger balances into indian rupee using the following exchange rate that is all you are given in this particular question you can easily manage this question of your own because opening rate is given 46 closing rate is given average rate is given and for fixed asset rate is very clearly given 42 so building we know that we will use the closing rate we'll multiply it with 42 to get the what we call value so uh, building sorry uh, for fixed asset rate is equal to 42 so 42 will be the rate i will use for building opening stock i will use the opening rate opening rate happens to be 46 and uh, opening rate and then we have got cash and bank balances our closing rate happens to be 50 so i will write here 50 and then purchases i will use the average rate which is given to me as 48 sales i will use the average rate 48 commission receipts commission receipts will be reflected towards the credit side however here you have to simply show the converted amounts correct that means when you will solve in you will write here amount in terms of rupee after multiplication these are exchange rates in terms of rupee so dollar into exchange rate you will get this value commission receipts of course you will use the average rate Dater's closing rate which happens to be 50 and creditors you will use the rate only hardly four mark question in the examination is it has struck then eighth eighth question is strong one which i will do it by myself i will do the complete solution in fact and 8.8 .8 and 8.9 are quite similar question correct out of these two i will do one and you are expected to do one question of your own now this question 8.10 you try to attempt i'm not telling that you should but you at least give it a try because this question is similar to the one which we just did even in this question messrs carlin limited head office at usa in in this question also the head office is in usa and branch is at mumbai india so this question is similar to the one which we just did a while ago that's the reason i'm asking you to give it a try in this particular question branch has given the trial balance correct all these trial balance is given and some information is this is this is normal information given to you in this particular question that opening stock is this much and um, figures are in thousand that mean three lakhs if i will figures in thousands are given so that is equal to 3 lakh, purchases 8 lakh and sales 12 lakh, sundry daters 4 lakh and 3 lakh. Bills of exchange, uh, if I will add 3 zero, it will be equal to 1 lakh 20 and 2 lakh 40 thousand. Wages and salary, rent and rates, sundry charges. Now, I would like you to pay attention to this item computer. I would like you to pay attention to this item computer. Why I am saying so? because here in this particular question there is an information related to this item it is written computers were acquired from a remittance of us dollar 6000 that means the corresponding value of 240 is equal to 6000 first of all you need to understand this 
is clear to you? Receipt from New York. This is the corresponding value. That means when I will convert in terms of Indian currency, it is equal to two lakh forty thousand, and its corresponding dollar value will be equal to dollar six thousand. Further question says depreciate computer at sixty percent for the year. However, in this question, it is not said or it is not asked to incorporate the adjustments in the trial balance itself. So what I will do, I will not take the depreciated figure in the trial balance. I will do, uh, I will give the adjustment in normal manner as as we are actually accustomed to. I will talk about it later on. I will do this question. Don't worry about that. But still, I would like you to give it a try. For example, further it is given that unsold stock. Now, unsold stock is four lakh twenty thousand, and now we are given the exchange rate in the beginning. That is forty at the end. It is forty-two. So you can easily divide it by forty-two to get an average rate is forty-one. Further question has also asked you that your conversion in dollars shall be made up to two decimal accuracy. That means if there there is a figure in points, at least after point keep two digits. Now the question also says. You are asked to prepare in U.S. dollar the revenue statement for the year ended 31st March 2020, and the balance sheet as on date of Mumbai branch as it would appear in the books of New York head office, which is Carlin and Company. And further question says that you are informed that Mumbai branch account showed a debit balance of now. Almost at the end of the question, this particular amount is given. So that is the point. Actually, I just wanted to bring to your notice that branch is claiming that we are supposed to pay one six two. We are supposed to receive one six two zero, correct? And uh, uh, rupees to head office. New York office account. So branch is claiming that we are supposed to give one six two zero. However, its corresponding value is dollar thirty nine six zero nine point one eight. This is the corresponding value which is given to you. Is it clear to you? And it is given almost at the last of the question. So in this question, what I did, just pay attention. In this question, what I did, I wrote <coughs> opening stock. Correct. I took what we call the opening date figure, divided by divided it by that. Actually, we haven't written the figures. The figures are here: three lakh. So three lakh divided by forty will be equal to seven thousand five hundred. Similarly, the amount of purchases will be divided by average rate forty one to get these figures. Similarly, debtors and creditors will be divided by, of course, the closing rate to get these figures. Bills of exchange will be divided by closing rate to get these figures. Wages and salary average rate, rent average rate, sundry charges average rate. You will get these figures. Computers. This is the point. See, I haven't done any anything else. I have simply written dollar six thousand because it was given in the question that computers were acquired to remittance of dollar six thousand. Quite obviously, it means its corresponding value is dollar six thousand. Is it clear to you? Bank balance forty two. We got this figure. And then head office account corresponding value I just told you is dollar thirty nine six zero nine. So I will write here. Now one way of one way of treating the depreciation is that after writing six thousand dollars, you can compute depreciation sixty percent, and then write for example six thousand dollars I have written. If I will compute sixty percent depreciation, it will be equal to dollar three thousand six hundred, and two thousand four hundred will be the net value of the computer. It is another approach you can follow, because in this question nothing is given. In that case, I have the right whether I want to incorporate the information in the trial balance or not. So one way is that I can now write computer here at two thousand four hundred. And depreciation three thousand six hundred, 
or I can simply leave it at 6000 and provide depreciation later on because ultimately the results would be same. That is my point is. In this question, very interestingly, there is neither any exchange difference. There is no exchange difference. Neither exchange difference nor exchange loss. There is neither exchange loss or gain. That means both these sides are getting tallies, even though the points are, even though figures are in point, but still surprisingly, we are giving, getting the same figures. Now I will prepare the account, correct? Opening stock $7,500, purchases we have got, sales we have got, closing stock $4,20,000 in Indian currency divided by closing rate and you will get $10,000. So in this wages and salary you will write. So in this case we are having a loss of $1,402.45. We will bring this loss towards this side and now we will write the rest of the items, rent, sun, sundry charges, and now I will provide the depreciation because earlier I did not write depreciation. So, dollar <coughs> six thousand. So I will write depreciation here three thousand six hundred. And in the balance sheet, I will write computer six thousand less depreciation three thousand six hundred to get two thousand four hundred. Are you getting my point or not? Because I haven't incorporated depreciation earlier. So now I will incorporate the depreciation. So twice depreciation will figure one towards the debit side of the trading account, trading and profit and loss account and of course you will subtract it as you normally do or the approach you can also adopt that way around which I just told you the same results we would get correct then sundry charges the depreciation on computers you have written so in this question finally you are having a net loss of this much and the point which I just wanted to tell you I have already told you now and now in this case computer you have to take care of 2400 closing stock 10000 sundry debtors bank balance bills receivable bills payable sundry creditors new york office account and this time there is a net loss you will subtract it to get this thing i hope you can now manage this particular question quite easily so when i will meet you in the next session we will take care of the rest of the question there are some very strong questions yet to come but that we will take care of in the upcoming session. So till then it's time to say goodbye.